Asia and the idea of combining unrelated music and story segments into a feature-length film. We had all of these shorts, some of them beautifully done, and so Walt started packaging them together and put it, making them feature-length. In 1946, Make Mine Music was released. It consisted of several animated segments featuring popular music of that era, provided by Nelson Eddy, Dinah Shore, Benny Goodman, and the Andrews Sisters. Here comes a cartoon movie from Walt Disney. A lot of people have been waiting for that a long, long time. With the end of the war, Walt revived Mickey and the Beanstalk for his first and most famous star, and decided to pair it with Bongo. The introduction of the lovable little circus bear would make Mickey's return to the silver screen an even more sensational event. Since his debut, Mickey Mouse's voice had been provided by his creator, Walt Disney. He still speaks for me, and I still speak for him. In Steamboat Willie, in addition to speaking for Mickey, I also supplied a few sound effects for Minnie, his girlfriend. Here, in a recently discovered rare film clip, Walt Disney performs as Mickey Mouse with Billy Bletcher in a recording session for Mr. Mouse Takes a Trip. So, it's you, huh? Yeah, me, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Someone to sing him to sleep. 
Well, why didn't he turn on the radio? Well, they didn't have radios in those days. Yeah, that's why they called it Happy Valley. <laughs> Bergen and Walt Disney were longtime friends. Walt had even featured Bergen's Charlie McCarthy in several short cartoons. What a beautiful sunrise. I respect your nose. In 1950, Bergen would also be a guest on Disney's very first television program. Mr. Bergen, is there anything you would like to see in the Magic Mirror? Co-starring in the live-action segments was child actor Luanna Patton. Walt was also starting to build a kind of a repertory company as he moved into live-action. And the first young stars he had were Bobby Driscoll and Luanna Patton, who he had found for Song of the South. Telling the story of Bongo was Dinah Shore. Oh, a musical story sung by Dinah Shore. Well, what are we waiting for? Dinah Shore was a very popular singer at the time, uh, had hit records, and also was a, featured on her own weekly radio show, soon to be a television show. So having her name as the singer-narrator of Bongo uh, was a real asset to the film. This is still the place for a fellow like me. Just lazy and loafing and fancy free. Fun and Fancy Free premiered on September 27, 1947. Package films like Fun and Fancy Free kept the Disney magic alive in the eyes of movie audiences. And with these films, the Disney studio built up its creative strength to produce a whole new series of feature animation successes. For war-weary audiences, Fun and Fancy Free was a refreshing tonic, a tuneful and carefree jaunt with friendly and familiar characters under the guiding hand of favorite storyteller Walt Disney. The same holds true today. It's just an entertaining film that's really well done. But you find you wind up living in the sun, full of fun and fancy free. Bye now.